How are you doing, mate? All good. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit roby today, to be honest, mate. I had my second COVID jab yesterday, and they always say that if your first one um, is okay and you don't have many side effects, your second one knocks you for six, and that, that's what's happened to me today. Like, I've right, just... before you say another word, uh, Richard had his second one the other day, and he had three three bad days over it. Oh well, I had the Moderna and I'm um, oh my arms, my arms absolutely aching. I, I went, I went to the gym this morning and I'm glad I went this morning because as the day's gone on, I've just got gradually worse. I'm feeling cold, got stomach cramps. Yeah. Oh Christ! You'll shake it off in the next couple of days. I will. Well, I'm fit, mate. You know that, so. Yeah, I'm all yeah, good. Now listen, I've sorted a box of chocolates out for Izzy. I got your message last night. She was over the moon. But you know what she said before you rang? Yeah. Before you even rang, bless her, she went, you know what, Dad? She says, because of where Charlie is, she says, I feel a bit I feel a bit sad taking the box of chocolates off him. <laughs> so she says, she says, can you tell him if he rings and I'm not there? She says, that Dad's going to buy you a magnum when he sees you from me. <laughs> bless her. Listen, uh, but the thing is, it won't be coming to your house, it'll be going to your office. That's fine, mate. I'll pick it up on... I'll... I never, ever, ever give anyone your address or phone number. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Only if you tell me to. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, mate. Izzy's over the moon, mate. Right, do you want to ask about that thing? Aye, what's happening with that? Because obviously I, I was shocked to see in the newspaper about you getting, um, you know, getting mentioned in a bloody terrorist case, which you, you know, you haven't met this bloke, and I'm, I was convinced that you'd never even been in the same prison as him. But what kind of, what kind of uh, journalist does that? What, what, what's the story behind it? Well, the truth is, Steve, there's not many things get under my skin or upset me, but this has really, really smashed my head in, mate. Because you've just said it. Number one, I don't even know the geezer. He's never been in the same jail as me. He's not a type of person I would ever, ever associate with. But what has upset me is at the coroner's inquest, the family of his victims who he stabbed to death on that bridge in London. The filthy, stinking coward. The family was in that inquest. And my name was brought up in that inquest for everyone to hear that I told him to do it. Now, anyone that knows me knows I'm absolutely 100% against any form of terrorism act. To me, they're scum, they're cowards, they're horrible, horrible people. And I don't associate with them. So how can my name be brought up in a terrorist coroner's inquest? Now, them poor family have got to go home and they're never going to forget me. They're all going to be thinking, that Charlie Brunson. What an horrible bastard. And anyone who knows me knows I would never, ever, ever go down that road. Even though I've been inside all my life, I've kept me morals. I don't cross the line. I'm a man of pride and self-respect. And to be dragged in to a terrorist act where innocent people are being stabbed to death makes me feel, well, it just makes me feel sick. Yeah, I'm not happy, Steve. Yeah, I can tell, mate. I wouldn't be happy either. And, of course, it's a big year for you with your parole. Yeah, I know. I don't need it, mate. I don't need it. Uh, I've wrote a letter to the, the, the newspapers, a statement. I want an apology of them. And if I don't get an apology, well, something's going to happen, mate. You're going to have to have a protest or something. Because if I was outside, they'd never get away with it, mate. Yeah. It's, it's a defamation of character. It's libelous. It's disgusting. People call me all sorts of names, and I've had it all my life. But them poor family and them victims who got stabbed to death think that I told him to do it. Fake news. How does that work out, mate? Unbelievable, mate. To hear this is is it's ridiculous to to know that that's something that you you, you have to go through. You know, there was yeah. a story about Ian Huntley, which was doing the rounds on the internet. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I 
Sebastian Antliat when he's 400 miles away from me. Uh, the last week that I was supposed to have died in myself. Do you think this is? Do you think this is mysterious powers at work? Do you think it's? Do you think it's mischievous journalists, or do you think it's? Do you think it's the powers that be? Maybe. Do you know what I actually think? The truth. Every time I'm coming up for a jam roll review, there's always something silly little stories popping up in the papers and on websites and Facebooks. I honestly believe it's done trying to upset me. To make me do something to fuck me up for my freedom. Yeah. But, um, you know, I've got big shoulders, I can handle it. But when I read that in the paper, that I told a terrorist to stab them people, that made me feel sick. I feel, I just feel like it's gone too far, mate. It really has. It really has. Anyone who sits on a parole hearing, though, will be able to address the facts that are placed in front of them, which is, which I suppose is, a, is the only positive in the sense that your your representative will be able to say this story that yeah. came out clearly proves that yeah. Charlie has never been well, in the same I've, prison. I've, I've had a chat with the legal team over it, and uh, we're gonna we, we're taking notes, researching all these silly little stories just to let the jam roll board know what I've got to put up with. Yeah. It's I've cr- got to put up with. You know, I've, I've even had letters from people outside and emails, prisoners' emails, saying, don't you want to get out, Charlie? What are you doing attacking Ian Huntley? You'll never get out. We don't think you want to get out. No. How do you think I feel when I get silly little letters and emails like that? It's ridiculous, mate. It really is. It jeopardises it jeopardizes your parole. That's the bottom line. I know, I know, mate. I know, but I'm doing. I'm I'm handling it the right way. But well, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be happening, mate. Well, keep me in the loop with regards to the the legal action and whether you get some kind of response from the newspapers because that's very important. Yeah, I, I, at the at the least, I should get an apology. You should. Yeah, you should. One hundred percent. You know yourself. You've been in the game a long time, Steve. The apology's about four lines. Yeah, and and it's on an irrelevant page. It's not front page yeah, news. Yeah. People don't see it, and, and it's all like people saying, "Well, it was a, it was weeks ago, you know. It's old news. It's, uh, yesterday's newspapers is fishing chip material." Well, it don't work like that because then poor victims' parents and sisters and brothers now think that I told him to do it. Yeah, exactly. And they're, they're probably saying to their friends and families, "Oh, they don't want to let that Bronson geezer out." Oh, what a nasty man he is! Yeah, exactly, mate. And it's um, it, it needs to be nipped in the bud now, and and, and yeah. this needs to be prevented from happening again. You know, because you're yeah. you're walking and home. I'd be the first one to break his jaw. Yeah, it's crazy. I've got no time for people like that. Exactly, exactly. I've mate. got no time for they're cowards, mate. That's all they are is cowards. Yeah, exactly, mate. And, and, and all their victims are like innocent people, you know. Yeah. Exactly. No, you don't want to be tied up with that. Apart from that, I'm I'm rocking and rolling. Well, that's good, mate. That's good. I've had a nice day today, Steve. Have you? What you been doing? Well, I've got me fishing chips and mashy peas. Yep. Uh, Double fish, you know. I've got two bits of fish. Oh, lovely. So I had a right squeeze there, mate. I've smothered it in salt and vinegar. I made uh, six sandwiches, chip bays. Yep. Or put a bit of tomato ketchup on. Yeah. It was lovely. I had two cod fillets for my tea. I had some crinkly crinkly chips and some uh, some tomato sauce, a bit of coleslaw and a bit of pickled beetroot. Oh, I love that pickled beetroot. I love it. Yeah, so that's uh, so that was nice. We both had the same more or less today, a bit of fish, which was nice. Yeah, Good. Uh, I got me canteen. Good. Nice bit of fruit, some bananas, tomatoes, tangerines. Were you working out today? Did you get out? Oh, yeah, I'm out every day there, bruv. Every day. I don't miss a day. Only Sunday. Sunday's my day off. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, press-ups, sit-ups, step-ups, dips, pull-ups, squats. Don't stop, mate. My hour on the yard, well, it's me gym, isn't it? It is. It is. And we've got the big match on Sunday. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, mate. I think Italy's going to smash us. Really? Yeah, I do, honestly. 
OK, I'm going to put two bets on. Go on. First bet, um, after extra time, 1-0, England to win, 18-1 to 1 at the minute. 1-0 for England to win? After extra time. Right. Me other bet is England 4, Italy 2, Harry Kane hat-trick, 180 to 1. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Be on your next week. I'm going to try and get. I'm going to try and get some money on there. Uh, the commentator saying there's some people on the pitch that think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> 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 so we're going. Like we're, like we're going up. <laughs> we're going to the club at four o'clock. Um, at five o'clock, we're going to put on the 1966 World Cup final. And we're going to watch that, and then we're yeah. going to then we're going to watch the big game. Oh, fantastic. He was on telly uh, today. Uh, Sir Jeff. Yeah. I've met him a couple of times. Lovely guy. What a humble man he is, isn't he? Oh, he is. I mean, very humble. You know, for somebody who scored the hat-trick in the World Cup final, still the only man to do it. Very humble. Do you know what? Do you know what he said this morning on the telly? He says, the next day, he was was mowing his lawn. Yeah, mental lad, isn't he? And washing his car. How mental is that? Well, then, Dave, they want all the money they want today. Well, that's it, aye. But Sunday was a day of rest to get the jobs done round the house for you and the missus. Oh, no. Yeah. I got the packet from uh, from Irene, so I'm going through it. It's going to get scanned. It's going to get uh, scanned this week. Uh, it's going to take oh, a bit of time. Nice was the loads in it? Yeah, photographs, newspaper cuttings, um, and, you know, bits of your artwork and stuff. But the main thing was it got here, didn't get lost. So we're going to scan it professionally this week. I'm booked in for, for Wednesday to scan it. Um, it takes a while because of, obviously, the size of some of the stuff. You've got to, like, get it right, etc. But I've got the book away with the proofreader. So the proofreader genuinely takes... I usually get a proofread twice. Um, so it takes four weeks for the first one, four weeks for the second one to do the job properly. And then, yeah. then it goes back to Irene, which gives the scanner's got enough time to get everything done at his end. So I'm, I'm anticipating that we'll have a, a final copy of the book for, for Irene to look at on the computer. Um, well, it'll be two months time. So you're looking at September for it to look at it. It'll go away well, to the printers in September and it'll be out the first week in o- uh, October. That's that the plan. Could possibly be a Christmas number one. Well, that's the plan. Get it out there. See, the thing is, Steve, what you've got to remember, that's a new type of book you're doing there, mate. It is, yeah, and it's very different. And, it, and what people don't realise, you know, people read all these prison books and criminal books and what have you, but they don't realise it's the wives and the girlfriends and the kids outside who have it harder than we do. Exactly. Exactly. And you it's... know, they've got to get a loaf of bread on the table, mate. It's a book for women, this book. It is a book for it's, it's a book for all wives and mothers. Yeah. And what we've done is we've come up with, we're coming up with a list of your sayings, which you've said over the years, which are going to be at the start of each chapter. Yeah. Which I think is a great idea. So we just need you know, a, I think that's a good idea. We need but a forward from... I think this is going to be a one-off book, you know. What about getting her a bit of publicity, getting her on telly, loose women or something? Yeah, we're gonna, well, hopefully with COVID lifting, that's going to be possible. We're, we, you know, we're, Listen, I'll give, it, I'll give it a shot. I did explain to her. I said, look, I'm, I'm not a big publisher, Irene. I said, I'm not I'm not yeah, John Blake. I'm not this, I'm not that. Listen, I said, I specialise in doing small books, but doing them well. And I said, look, we'll, we'll try our best. We'll go for it. And I, and I said, if you want to go with somebody else, then please do. And she went, no, Steve, I trust you. I'd rather go with you. Yeah, she does. And, she does. And she said, I went to other, the, I went to some of these big publishers. She went and we didn't get a response and some who responded weren't interested. She said, so I'd rather go with you. But if you can get her on Loose Women or Phil and Ollie in the morning, that, that'll sell a few copies. Well, I mean, I, I don't have the contacts there, but maybe, I don't know if your George does, you know? Yeah, have a chat with him. See whether your George could do that because he can facilitate it. He's got some great contacts in the media. Yeah, I'll have a chat with him. And if he can get an exclusive with the Daily Star, that would be massive. Oh, fucking not many. Oh. So maybe that, I know it, I know it means you've got to do the, the asking, but if you don't mind doing that, that would be great. No, I'll sort that. I'll have a chat with him. Thanks, mate. That would be great. Excellent. I'll Obviously. have a chat about it. Right, listen, the buzz is gone. I'm off. Have a good weekend. And tell what, Izzy, enjoy the chockies. I will do. God bless you, mate.